everybody, welcome to Weekend Wrap and maybe the international break, but there is a ton to talk about. Jonah Friedman here with armchair analyst Matt Doyle, and let's look back at the big storylines over the last couple days. One MLS game on the weekend, and that was Vancouver hosting the Houston Dynamo. This one went about as we expected. I think everybody picked uh, the Whitecaps to jump out early and to really just kind of beat the Dynamo into submission. That makeshift back line didn't really hold up well for Houston. And with the speed of Darren Maddox up top, you need to all be on the same page. The Dynamo weren't. They got punished three times for it. From Vancouver, we're starting to see bit by bit this team take on Martin Rennie's personality. They were moving the ball around really well, especially in transition. And Gershon Coffey had a breakout performance. This is a guy who has been mostly functional, not spectacular. Uh, yesterday, he had four or five spectacular passes, just pinging the ball into space for Latou, for Maddox, for uh, Chumiento a few times as well. A lot of fun to watch. The team fourth place in the West, two points off the Sounders, even on games played, moving up. For number two, we'll start in on the international action, which of course was the big story of the weekend, and we start off down in Cuba on Friday. Yeah, mojitos for everyone. Thank Canada you. got the one nothing result, and this is really what they had to do. I mean, we all know that this is where they went out in World Cup qualifying for the last three cycles. They got a 1-0 victory off a great header from Olivier Ocean. Nice through ball, for, uh, sorry, a cross from David Edgar. And then, of course, interesting little drama there. Lars Hirschfeld getting thrown out, red carded, uh, just after the hour mark for coming out of his box and handling the ball. You can't do that in soccer, from <laughs> what I understand. Uh, but Milan Borjan came in and held the fort admirably. Don't forget, this is the same guy who did pretty well for them in the Gold Cup. He and Hirschfeld kind of split duty. Uh, but now the fun really starts. Canada now have the three points. That's more than they had in the entire third round of qualifying in the last cycle. So they're off to a good start. But they head home to Toronto on Tuesday. They host Honduras. It doesn't get any easier, but if they can get another three points out of this one, they'll be sitting pretty. And number one, of course, the U.S. hosting Antigua in Barbuda. An easy win for the U.S. Underwhelming. <laughs> uh, that was the word of the night on Friday. Everybody, I think, was, was disappointed in, in the overall performance. A 3-1 win. Yeah, it's a win in qualifying. Yeah, it starts off with top of the, top of the group, but just underwhelming all around. The, the team looked dead tired. Michael Bradley was seen jogging, which we've never seen from Michael <laughs> Bradley before. Uh, nobody could really link up too effectively. Uh, Hercules Gomez, probably the man of the match, had that great header to set up Boca Negra's early goal and then got a goal himself at the end. But really, other than that, there wasn't a lot to be taken positive from this game. The midfield still looks disorganized, and Aguchi and Nievo just, just terrible play on the Antiguan goal. Uh, so an ugly win, but a win nonetheless. And now Tuesday, they go down to Guatemala, and they got to play better than that. If that team shows up in Guatemala, they're coming back to the U.S. with a loss. Let's take a look at the weekend's top performers. In the MLS game, it was all caps. Joe Cannon having a vintage performance. And two guys who are international quality but have not yet been called up to the senior national teams, Gerson Kofi and Darren Maddox. Yeah, Ghana and Jamaica, respectively. Maddox got called in April. He didn't get capped yet, but he, he's going to play for the Reggae Boys probably this cycle, probably this qualifying round, really. He, he just, as a quick, off-the-ball, get-into-space type of forward, he's a real predator. He's... He's got all the tools, and, and you can see he's got that cockiness and that swagger that you like to see in forwards. With, with Kofi, like I said before, he, he just played such a complete game, and we haven't seen this out of the kid. He's only 21, uh, but he's got the world at his feet right now. You could see why Martin Rennie's so high on him. He suddenly became that focal point that you could really run an offense around. It was nice to watch, and Houston didn't really have any answers. Now we'll look at Houston. There's nobody who we named in this game. However, they've got a guy coming in very soon who was Awfully good in international duty this weekend. Oscar Boniac Garcia, the right-sided midfielder, at least that's where they see him fitting in. Excellent in a 2-0 loss to Panama. Yeah, a real live wire, uh, just physical, athletic, got a good head on his shoulders, and he, he plays the ball early. He, he doesn't take too many touches, and he, he, that, by doing that, he really puts his teammates into good positions. Now, his teammates didn't capitalize for Honduras, but with guys like Will Bruin, Brian Ching, Brad Davis, hopefully Luis Camargo gets back to what he was last year, Boniac Garcia really looks like he could answer some questions that the Dynamo have at this point, and they need to get them answered because they're out of the playoff hunt. This, right now, they are in sixth place in the East. All right, let's take a look at the standings in World Cup qualifying in the CONCACAF region. The U.S. still on top of Group A despite that less than convincing win, but they're only on top by goal differential. Jamaica also got a win over the weekend, but uh, they're in second place. If you look down at Group B, Mexico on top after defeating Guyana at home 3-1. Same scoreline, also not so convincing necessarily like the U.S. 
Uh, but Mexico also have a tough trip coming up to go to El Salvador. Behind two goals from Blas Perez, Panama on top of Group C, but again only by goal differential just ahead of Canada, and that really works well ahead of Tuesday's qualifiers. Canada looks like they could get on top of this group with the right result, but Honduras is not going to be easy. And then again, neither is Guatemala for the U.S., so stay tuned for that. We'll have a live chat on MLSsoccer.com. We'll have recaps of all the international action on Tuesday. That'll do it for us.